There's a new push for Queensland to become the latest state to outlaw dishonest political ads. And while voters are all for it, the pollies? Yeah, not so much. Queenslanders, you've been lied to. At least that's what those pushing for this crackdown on deceitful political ads in the Sunshine State are claiming. In the recent Queensland election, all sides were a bit naughty. Labor claimed the LNP had a secret plan to sack thousands of public servants. Their evidence? Zip. The LNP claimed Labor wasn't going to deliver a budget in 2020. Not true. And Clive Palmer asked voters to stop Labor's death tax, which was a complete fabrication. And in a world where there's increasing disinformation, unless we do something about it, our democracy uh, risks sliding into a fake news free-for-all. To be clear, no one, including Queensland's Labor government, is planning to introduce new campaign advertising rules. And here's one possible reason why. Well, boring old truth and fact is boring and old. Who wants that? If you're going to change votes, yeah, you need a strong, emotive, misleading ad. I mean, truth's a desperate last resort in advertising. Bill Shorten wants to tax your ute. The Greens want to share your internet search history. The Liberals want to privatise Medicare. Scott Morrison hates puppies. Now, only two of those ads were real. None of them was true. But according to a 1981 High Court decision, all of them are perfectly legal. It basically said it's legal to tell lies in an election campaign as long as those lies only aim to influence who someone will vote for. It's only illegal to tell lies that might cause a voter who's chosen a candidate to fill out their ballot wrongly. No, you can't legislate for honesty. And advertising isn't fundamentally honest. It's about putting the best possible glossy coat that you can on an idea or scaring the hell out of someone. Um, that's what you do in politics. Almost 90% of Aussies polled want tougher truth in political advertising laws. But we're living in an age of post-truth politics where politicians will often keep to their version of reality even after it's been proven wrong or made up. They cheated and they rigged our presidential election, but we will still win it. We will still win it. So what even is the truth in politics? But then you've got this issue of because you've got television ads, you've got radio ads, you've got online ads, and we've seen in the last few US elections how hard they are to regulate, and you've got text messages being sent out. I don't even know how you would begin to regulate this stuff at the speed that you would need to do it. It would be from complaints, I reckon. It would start that way. So you'd raise a complaint and then someone would look at it. But the question is, how do you determine what's false? Like, for example, if you say um, the Liberals want to get rid of Medicare, now they don't have a policy to do that. But you could argue that on the basis of their history and the, what they've, you know, their opposition to Medicare in the past, that's what they want to do. Is that a lie? Like, would you want to see an ad like that banned or not? Yeah, see, in the end, do, doesn't it all come down to the fact that, you know, this is what happens during political campaigns, which only run for a finite period of time? Yeah. And maybe it's just all too much hard work for anyone to make a complaint and then wait for it to, to you know, be prosecuted. And... Well, so it feels except, like a slippery except... slide, though, right? Because I feel like if we just go, well, it's too hard and nobody trusts politicians, we're going to end up in a position that looks a little bit like America yeah. right now, so where this, this, this trust is really, really, like, you know, it's toxic. Yeah. So I think we have South Australia to thank because they've had a crack at this. Uh, they've been doing it for ages now, a couple of decades. And they have... There are some examples where they have rules that that ad has to be pulled. Um, this is one. So they're only for very specific things. So this was a specific ad in 2018. Um, the opposition leader at the time, Stephen Marshall, now the Premier, claimed that uh, the... His party's energy plan would save households $300 a year. See that figure down the bottom? Yep. It's circled. Yep. It's a really specific claim that you can disprove. And they found that to be false and they forced that ad to be pulled. But it's only that kind of thing that will really get caught under that sort of right. legislation. Right? Yes, it's, it's, wow. it's really hard to do at scale, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I think you're burying the lead. I want to know why the Prime Minister hates puppies. What was that about? <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not allowed to broadcast it on this show, unfortunately. <laughs> Ironically, it's strange. Do your research. Yeah, yeah, you will. On the internet. Um, yeah, subscribe to my newsletter, Pete. It'll all be there. Um, we're off to a break. We'll see you very soon. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. Wages are growing at their slower, sustained pace. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.